All right, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Beyond Baseball Shorts here. Um, we are. This is the podcast where we're just trying to bring you some human side of the game and uh, a peek behind the curtains of different processes that go into playing professional baseball. Um, and I'm lucky enough to be do- joined by Ben Kudrina of the Kansas City Royals, a right-handed pitcher who was taken in the 2021 draft. Uh, ben, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Good, good. I um, appreciate you taking some time to chat. Uh, one thing that you have just recently gone through in the last couple of years was the MLB draft. And I think this episode, we want to take a little bit, peel back the curtain to give people a look into what the MLB draft process is like. Uh, now you've had a little bit of time in professional baseball under your belt, but kind of take us into the draft process and draft day. What was that experience like for you? And what were some of the ups and downs of that draft process? Uh, it's definitely a crazy process to say the least. Um, you know, it kind of starts the year before when you're doing all your zoom calls and your zoom meetings. Um, so it's kind of a buildup, but then that, that kind of two weeks before, and then the week before it's, it's a crazy time. Um, but it's super exciting. You know, it's definitely one of the, one of the most exciting and, and fun periods I've had in my life. Um, but, you know, there's a, there's a lot of ups and downs. Um, you know, everybody has their number. Everybody wants to get drafted, mm-hmm. you know, whether, you know, college guy, high school guy, um, and so, you know, there's, there's times you're going to hear that, you know, teams pass on you, teams don't want you. You'll hear that, you know, there are teams that do. So, you know, mentally it's kind of a, it's a tug back and forth between, you know, sometimes you're thinking, am I good enough? You know, is this really the right process? Um, you know, for me, it, you know, my polls were, you know, maybe college is the answer. Like, do I still want to go through with this? Um, but I think, it, you know, at the end of it, it's just trusting yourself and, and trusting in the plan that, that you kind of made. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough. My, my parents are, are very good and they, they helped lay a good foundation, a good plan with my agent um, so that we were prepared and we were ready and, and we kind of knew um, what we were going into and everything was kind of laid out. So I think um, that helped a bit. But it was uh, it was exciting. You know, there were there were days that, you know, you're down because you hear a couple teams pass on you. But then, you know, the next day you're right back up because, oh, well, this team's you know interested and and they like you. So uh, it's definitely definitely a, a up and down roller coaster ride. But it was fun. Yeah, I remember I worked at the University of Nevada in baseball operations, and when we had guys that were getting ready for the draft, their constant their mindset was like, "Well, are we going to get picked?" Especially a lot of those guys were going later in the draft, so you get to like day three, day four at the time when it was like fifty picks or something like that. Guys were going a, a little bit anti, but uh, what kind of went into your mindset when you were uh, trying to figure out whether to go to college or go to the the pros? Um, who was your kind of biggest mentor during that process, too? Um, it's definitely my dad, just yeah. from a mentor side, he's, he's really good at, at, you know, staying down to earth and being honest and, and, you know, he won't sugarcoat anything and he, he, he gave everything to me straight. So he said, um, you know, here's, here's our plan, you know, here's your number. This is, um, you know, what you have in mind. And then here's, you know, the hard facts, you know, you college, you get a degree, you get three more years, you mature, but then on the, you know, the flip side, if you, if you get your number, you get right into pro ball, you can start developing, you get under um, you know, professional development. So he laid everything out. Um, and, and that was, you know, kind of my biggest help, um, you know, day by day was just, you know, understanding that we did have a plan and we wanted to stick to that. And I was comfortable with it. Um, you know, every guy's different and, and every guy kind of attacks the process a different way. Um, but I think the, the biggest thing for me was knowing a, that I had two great options. Um, and then when the time comes and, and my agent said this a lot and my dad was just, um, you know, you can't look back and, and you can't have any regrets. You know, if, if you go into pro ball and you regret not going to college, you're going to sink. And if you go to college and regret not going to pro, uh, pro ball, then you're going to sink as well. So you just you got to be got to trust with your decision, be happy with your decision and then, um, you know, work as hard as you can. Yeah, it's kind of like that concept of like being where your feet are. Uh, you decide whatever route you're going to take and then you just got to live with that and kind of hope for the best and kind of go and push forward. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say kind of would you say that? the decision was helped a little bit by being taken by your hometown team as well. <laughs> I think it did. Yeah. They, it, yeah. it relieved some nerves. Um, it was definitely cool. It, it helped the experience. Um, you know, it was just that much better, but um, you know, I would have been, I would have been happy anywhere, but just that, it, you know, it was the Royals, my hometown team, the team I grew yeah. up watching. Uh, it was, it was nothing, nothing short of special. Yeah. I think the other thing we kind of touch on and beyond baseball too, is kind of the value of relationships um, and kind of helping people through different kind of uh, transitions in life. How, how was it having guys like Frank Mazzucato and Carter Jensen, who are both other high school kids, uh, one from your area and your hometown and some kind of the same area, but what, what was it having those two guys with you and the importance of having those relationships Have you all kind of made that transition from high school to pro ball? 
uh, it was a blessing in disguise and I don't think yeah. we realized it right away, but, but now, um, you know, having, I live with, you know, Shane and Frank and then Carter's right next door. Um, but just us four having, having all of us together has been big just cause we're all in the same boat. Um, you know, everybody, you know, us four are all going through the same things. We're experiencing the same things and different things, but, um, you know, we've all, we've all got each other to come back to at the end of the day and kind of just bounce off each other and help each other out. So, um, you know, day by day, we realize how special of an opportunity it is to have, um, you know, all four of us high school kids, um, you know, at the same level, going through the same things yeah. with and for each other, um, you know, always competing against each other. They're just small things like that. It's uh, it's been incredible. Yeah, I'm sure it's like it's just super helpful to kind of have someone there. You're like, OK, this guy's going through the same situation as I am every single day. So um, I guess the, the another question that comes to mind, too, is that you made that debut in low A Columbia this year. Kind of what was that experience like? Because you can go through extended spring training and all the different things where you're just kind of pitching out at the Arizona complex and the heat. But what was it like to actually kind of step on that first professional baseball field, even though it's not the big leagues, but it's still that moment where you're just like okay this is pro ball it, yeah I mean it, it felt like the big leagues you know the, yeah. the nerves and the adrenaline with it um you know it, it had that feeling to it um especially you know our, our first summer with the draft being pushed back a month you know we were in Arizona all year and had our build up to uh playing instructs and then um obviously we had this year's spring training extended so when we finally got out there um you know you gear it up you're you're in a you know big stadium you got fans finally um, it all it all kind of comes down, you know, my family was there and then obviously having all the guys there. Uh, it's super special. You know, it's cool just to uh, see guys surrounded by you that, you know, you played in with spring training and then you're finally getting to play with again. Um, so it was awesome. You know, I had, I had a big smile on my face. I was I was nervous and, and you know, wanted to play well, but I couldn't help but smile and just be happy because, you know, it's what we've been waiting for. And, um, you know, obviously moving up, you just kind of hope for the next and, and high double A, triple and then obviously the big leagues. Yeah. And that, and that's awesome. And when, as you made that kind of transition to low A, has there been a specific player that's kind of been at the upper levels or coach on the coaching staff that's kind of really you've gone on to as a mentor has really helped you kind of uh, transition to the professional baseball? Well, there's been a lot of guys. Um, and I think a lot of those relationships grew in spring training. Um, one of our big things was we did, uh, it was called morning coffee. We, we did every day with that's guys cool. like Michael Massey, Vinny, um, Pasquantino, uh, John Rave, a, a bunch of those guys, John, um, Jacob Means, they were all there. So a lot of those older guys we, we've reached out to this season, just checked in with, um, seeing how they're doing, bouncing, just, you know, hey, here's what I'm experiencing. Um, you know, what you guys go through? How how did you manage this? Um, and then the coaching staff as a whole, whether it's, you know, hitting coach, catching coach, um, our pitching coach, hey, like everybody in our in our locker room and our staff has been incredible just um, with helping us, you know, you know, sitting us down, walking us through things. Um, you know, kind of just filling us in on, on how to manage the ups and downs of, of the minor leagues and, and low A and, um, you know, outing to outing day by day. So um, just the organization as a whole has been and super helpful. They've, they've backed us. They've um, helped us out in any way we needed. And um, it's it's been great for all of us. Yeah. And that's that's awesome to hear. And kind of as you progress through uh, the rest of this season and kind of start looking towards goals in the offseason 2023, what would be some of your um goals not just on the field but off the field as you kind of develop as a person outside of the game as well yeah I think off the field the the biggest thing for me is just finding things I love to do besides baseball because you you play so many games and you're at the field every day and you do so much baseball in, in the time period of the season that you know when, when you get away from the field and you get time to get away I think it's important that you you do spend it doing other things you like and not just um, you know sitting there thinking baseball 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 because it's yeah like a full season, it's, you know, mentally and physically, it, it, it tolls on you as the season goes on. And, um, you know, it's a good thing in some points, you know, it's you, you got to experience that. But I think um, the off season is, is a great opportunity to kind of relax a little bit, get back into things you like, clear your mind, you know, whether you had a good season, a bad season, um, you know, good outing, bad outing, whatever it is. Um, I think it's important just kind of sink back and, and find things you like to do um, and, and kind of take your mind away from baseball before, you know, you get right back into it come spring training. Yeah, I think that's huge because a lot of the guys that we've interviewed in the past, like Tyson Ross and things like that, they said a lot of it, what it boiled down to is they lost their identity within the game. So they, they were bringing home their bad performances and their good performances and not having those little outlets. So it's good to see that you're already kind of recognizing that early and kind of developing those tools and resources to help you find that. Um, I think as we wrap up here, the the one last question I have just for any of 
players is kind of what advice would you have for future draft class guys that are coming from high school to the pros um, or just any of the 2022 draft guys as they kind of set their way into the, the season here? I think my biggest thing is, is first and foremost, just enjoy it every second of it. Um, you know, obviously this is only my first full year um, and just, you know, kind of half, half full year, but um, even winding down, you know, we're in our last two weeks of the season We're we're on the road, then we're home. But um, me and some of the guys were talking about last night about how like this year's already flown by. Like it's crazy how yeah. we were so excited for this season. We played it up so much last off season. And now that we're at the end of it, we're like, Oh crap. Like this is already like our season one's over with. And so I think just not taking any day for granted um, is something I've come to learn. And especially, you know, like start days and bullpens and all the small things matter. Um, so just don't take anything for granted, you know, work as hard as you can every day because, you know, by the end of the season, it, you know, it's over and you're on to the next year and then the next and the next. And, um, you know, this, this game is such a short period of your life. And obviously I'm just getting into it, but yeah, um, it's, you know, it's such a short, short time period that you, you don't really have time to waste. Um, so just enjoy it, have fun. It is a blast, um, you know, getting to play baseball for a living. You, you can never complain. So uh, enjoying that every day. And then, um, you know, just not taking anything for granted and, and getting your work in every day is, is kind of how I view every day and attack every day. Yeah, and I think you hit it on the head. I think Kobe Bryant talked about how everybody wants to take that quantum leap, but sometimes you just got to go step by step, be where yeah. your feet are, and kind of kind of live it day by day. Um, but, Ben, I can't thank you enough for taking some time to join us on Beyond Baseball. Yeah, we wish you the best um, as you kind of finish the rest of the season and go into 2023. Awesome. I appreciate you having me. It was a pleasure coming on and getting to talk.